The idea for the Seven Sisters series struck me a few days after the new year of 2013. I'd been searching for my next story, but had wanted to find an overarching angle to add to my current past-present novels, something that would challenge and excite me and my readers. I've always watched the stars, and as many of you know, been fascinated by what we don't know. And on that beautiful frosty evening in North Norfolk, I stood outside and looked up, thinking of our own seven children, and saw the seven sisters' stars shining like beacons above me. Half an hour later, I gathered the family together and told them what I wanted to write. Seven books, basing each story allegorically on the many legends that surround the Seven Sisters. From the Aborigines to the Mayans, and of course the famous Greek legends, the Seven Sisters stars have been part of a worldwide mythological culture. For hundreds of years, they have provided a guiding light to human beings, Sailors have used them to navigate fragile crafts across the seas, and by some they are regarded as the seven mothers who fell from the stars and seeded the earth, and were even used as a name for a car brand by the Japanese, Subaru, the Six Sisters. But of course, I'm a contemporary author, and I wanted to find a way to make sure that my readers related directly to my sisters, as all my other stories have done. I also wanted to celebrate the amazing, iconic and cultural achievements of humanity. So I decided that my girls would be collected from across the seven seas by their mysterious adoptive father, Pa Salt, whose name apart from suiting his love for sailing and the fact that he and his daughters live in a beautiful fairy tale house on the shores of Lake Geneva is an anagram from the Greek myth of Atlas who carried the world on his shoulders. So I thought where do I go first to set Maya's story and then I found myself in Brazil staring up at one of the seven new wonders of the world, Christ the Redeemer. In Rio, I discovered my neighbour was Bel Noronha, the great-granddaughter of Etour de Silva Costa, the architect of the Cristo. Not only did she give me access to his diaries and her own wonderful film documentary, showing exactly how Etour conceived and engineered the structure that would be built atop Corcovado Mountain, but she shared with me the mystery of whom the Christos' hands had actually been modelled on. I then spent time writing up in the mountains at the beautiful Fazenda Santa Teresa, an old coffee farm, almost unchanged to this day, and learned of the effect the Wall Street crash in 1929 had on coffee prices in Brazil and how it ruined the country's economy and destroyed the fortunes of the coffee barons overnight. As for the present, all the sisters gather at Atlantis as they've received a call telling them that their beloved adoptive father, Parsold, is dead. But when they arrive home, they discover their father has already been buried at sea. Parsalt's legacy to his daughters is an armillary sphere crossed by seven circular bands, six with the name of each sister engraved upon it, the seventh empty, just as the Greek mythology. The last sister has never been found. With Maya's story complete, the last chapter turns to Ali, the next sister who, sitting in Parsalt's study and picking up the house telephone, hears a very familiar voice. The Seven Sisters series is a huge, ambitious project, with each book a standalone story in its own right. But of course, the mystery of the Seventh Sister and Par Salt won't be revealed 
until the final book. <laughs>